Today, I wanted to do something a little bit different, and that is talk about a client low light. Now, you've probably already heard of client highlights, and it obviously makes sense for coaches, uh, self-employed people, to share the wins and successes that they're having with their clients, and to show you how great of a coach they are. But uh, no matter how famous, popular, educated, smart, successful a coach is, every single coach that you follow on social media, Instagram, YouTube, wherever, they are having clients that are not having a good time, that are mucking up, making mistakes, getting hurt, you know, all these types of things. And so today I want to talk about one of those instances, one of those cases that I'm having now. If you followed me for any length of time, you may have realized, or you may realize now, that I don't actually share client wins very often. And one of the reasons is that I often feel kind of disingenuous doing that. You know, at any, at any point in my career, I'll have a number of lifters doing really well and a couple of lifters not doing so well. And to share the wins uh, without talking about the losses feels kind of like I'm lying. And so to tackle that kind of head on, I'm actually just going to start with the, the negatives, with the losses, with the, oops, that kind of didn't go well. And the case I'm talking about today is one of my guys, Kevin. He's from the Gold Coast. I asked permission for him to talk about this, so he's cool with that. And Kevin was set to compete at the USAPL Nationals on the weekend in the 125 kilo junior class. And a number of miscommunications, uh, a number of, I suppose, um, yeah, I guess errors on my end, where I wasn't checking in enough, where I wasn't uh, clear enough, led to Kevin not making weight. And I'm not a nutritionist, I'm not a nutrition coach, I don't kind of deal with that kind of stuff. And I often actually don't deal with weight cuts much at all. Um, but in this instance, I just clearly wasn't attentive enough to Kevin's weight. I did point that out in the lead up. I was like, dude, we need to sort this out. But he assured me that it was all good. I kind of trusted him probably too much on that. And then he ended up not making weight. And so he was on the border of not being able to compete at all and having traveled all the way from the Gold Coast to Melbourne to compete. Uh, it's like a two hour flight for those that don't realize it's just like such a heartbreaking moment, right? If you've traveled and then you don't get to compete, he was able to compete anyway as an invited lifter or as a guest lifter. So his results wouldn't count to the nationals results, which was lucky, but yeah, it was just a clear F up. And, um, I felt really guilty about that. I felt like I'd let him down. Um, and we talked it through and we kind of like both came to some agreements as to like what went wrong and what we can do better in the future. And, you know, just to clarify real quick, I don't actually encourage many people to do weight cuts anymore. Like that was a thing that I used to do eight years ago. Um, but only in really fringe cases, is that something that I'm willing to help someone through? And so this wasn't a case of that. This wasn't a case of me pushing someone to do a drastic weight cut that was unreasonable. This was just literally like a miscommunication throughout the prep as to like where his body weight was at, what we need to do to get him down. You know, this is his first comp traveling. So, you know, a couple of factors like that. So I just felt really bad. Anyway, he spent the whole hour and a half of the weighing period trying to make weight. In the end, wasn't even close. And at the last second was invited to compete as a, as a guest lifter. And so had to rehydrate and do all that stuff. And so he lifted anyway, but you can imagine the mindset you have, you know, feeling so defeated, having lost all this weight. You've only got half an hour to re-recover. And he ended up lifting pretty average as well. Um, you know, he went three out of three in squats, but he missed, he squatted five kilos below what he did in the gym. And about 10 to 15 kilos less than we'd hoped. Bench was also a shit show. Deadlifts was kind of crap as well. So it was just like a objectively poor result. Um, but I do want to give Kevin a lot of credit on this because when all this kind of went down, I was like, obviously feeling super guilty. I wasn't there. And I felt like, you know, I'd let him down. And in the days afterwards, we had a, we had a phone call um, not long after that. And one of the things that he said to me was that he's as motivated as ever and that he feels like he's learned a lot from this instance. And one of the things I shared with him is that, you know, me being a coach and athlete in the situation that I am, one of the reasons why I'm situated to help so many people and uh, provide that kind of service is because I have a lot of experience. And the only way that I gather that experience is over years and years of comps like this, clients going through this stuff, me going through this stuff, and Kevin's really young. He's only a junior. This is only his second or third comp, maybe. Uh, maybe third comp. And so this is just an experience that he's able to bank, learn from, and move on from. And he already had that mentality. I didn't have to kind of sell that to him. So kudos to Kevin. Uh, you know, perfect mindset. I just know that before we know it, he'll be totaling 800 kilos. So this will, like, soon enough become a blip in his memory. But maybe kind of like one of those blessings in disguises, if I can kind of twist it like that and make it a positive thing. But no, objectively, it was an absolute shit show. So 
I just want to wear that as a badge, not as a badge, but as like a cop that on the chin, I suppose would be the phrase of like, yeah, mark that up, lifted like shit, like didn't make weight. Oh my God. It was just such a nightmare of a result. And the funny thing is his prep was actually really good. Hitting PBs all prep was injury free after a few months of injury or a bit more than a few months of injury earlier in the year. So everything was going really well and it just kind of fell apart at the last minute. And, you know, I wear that and that's something that I also want to improve on and yeah, I just know that as a team, Kevin and I will do really well moving on. All that said, I do want to talk about a win as well. And the win that I want to talk about is uh, my long-term uh, lifter, Matt Tinson. Now, I've been coaching Matt for nearly seven years. When he first started working together, his total was 602 and a half. And on the weekend at the same competition, he totaled 738 at 82 and a half kilo body weight. And that was an Australian record. Um, uh, it was 500 dots points for nine out of nine top end of all the of the comp plan that we had set out for him it was a 30 30.5 kilo total pb in seven months or so which is fucking heaps when you're an advanced lifter already so shout out to matt he fucking killed it and i was stoked that he did so well um and i was super proud of him of course and i was super proud of all the lifters that i coached and you know there was a number of lifters that competed that weekend a few did really well a couple didn't do so well and so i just kind of wanted to share both ends of that ex of that spectrum you know matt and I've been working together for seven years. And I think that's one of the reasons why he continues to do so well is because we have found things that work really well for him and found, uh, you know, I found a communication style that works well with him, programming style that works well with him, all that kind of stuff. And it just takes time. It just takes literally years to be able to develop that with someone. And yeah, I couldn't be more proud of Matt and the results that he was able to put up on the weekend. I'm also actually really proud of Kevin and the rest of the crew that even didn't do so well because it's hard to do a comp and not do so well, especially when you've invested so much of your heart and soul into it. So that's it. That's just a little recap from the weekend. Um, I am excited for the next chapter for these guys. And I just want to remind you all that no matter how good, like I said before, advanced, special, cool, educated, clouty A coaches, they have clients that aren't doing so well and you don't see that. And so, you know, maybe if someone's got a list of 40 clients and five of them are doing well, of course, they're going to share those five and it can create a skewed idea as to how good this coach is. And, you know, I uploaded a video not long ago about this, about, um, you know, the cognitive biases and survivorship biases that you'll notice around in coaching. So if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. But just something to point out, and I kind of don't want to provide this kind of like bias. I kind of want to be a little bit more fair and reasonable and honest with that. So yeah, hope you've enjoyed that discussion. One that was hard for me to talk about because yeah, admitting that you've stuffed up isn't easy. But uh, yeah, hopefully that's given you a bit of an insight into the reality of what it's like being a coach, working with all these people in these high pressure situations where you know they're investing a lot of time, money, effort, energy, emotional space to perform. And sometimes it just doesn't do well. So thanks for tuning in and I, uh, I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.